The first series that Netflix has released in the new year is a bit of a curveball. They've decided on a show with a new format its viewers aren't accustomed to. The first series features eight episodes, all watchable from the outset. The twist is that all but the last episode will play in random order. You and each of your friends, assuming you're not watching from the same screen, will watch the show in a different sequence, each building up to the same finale episode number 8. Though a change of pace is often welcome, presenting a show's stars, backgrounds, and supporting characters in different ways, this show leaves a lot to be desired, likely owing to the limitations of the selected format. Written by Eric Garcia, the fact that a maximum of one episode is able to build on all of the past events, the show stars lack dimension. What the creators could have done was organize the show in such a way as to present a radically different perspective of the story in each episode. They did not seize the opportunity. What they did was create something that feels much like if you watched a regular show in random order. Many of the same one-liners and traits of each of the people in the show are uttered over and over since you may be just starting the show on that episode. This results in a limited, cheesy show that feels forced. When fans watch shows involving a robbery series, they expect to see a lot of action and fascinating, fresh details. Having to watch each character re-establish their personality while repeating the same cliches robs viewers of that excitement. To be fair, the actors in Kaleidoscope are bright, charismatic individuals that enjoy a great chemistry together, but these sparks are short-lived. In the examples I'll provide, I'll be sure to skirt around details that would spoil the series for you. The mastermind behind this Mavericks operation, Lep Pap Giancarlo Esposito, said he was done with the underbelly business, but he's persuaded into one last heist. Successful lawyer and weapons handler Ava Mercer, played by Paz Vega, is his main woman in the robbery attempt. The two of them have a past relationship that goes way back. Meanwhile, they enjoy the backup and cooperation of Jordan Mendoza and Peter Mark Kendall. Last and perhaps least are the inexperienced knuckleheads of the bunch. The out-of-control Bob, played by Jai Courtney, along with his wife Judy Goodwin, played by Rosalind Elbe, a couple that hasn't yet had enough hard knocks to learn from. Then we get to the bad guy, Roger Salas, Rufus Sewell a business giant who had ties with Leo a long time ago. Roger is reporting to Hannah, played by Tati Gabrielle, who too is familiar with the protagonist. Meanwhile, the FBI can't stop thinking about what they know is an up-and-coming robbery of epic proportions that may fly right under the radar of their watch, represented by Agent Toby, played by Bubba Weiler, and Agent Abbasi, played by Neosha Noor, the series color codes all of its episodes so the person at home can join the robbery at any other moment. Red, the day after the heist. Pink, six months later. White, the day that the heist itself actually happens, etc. In green, seven years before the heist, we get something of a prequel. It's an all too common pitfall for shows to be stuck in limbo on Netflix. However, this show does so even while avoiding the traditional show structure. In each episode you watch, no matter if you start on green or red, you will hear the same cliches over and over, underscoring their death of dimension. The culprit is likely simply the format of show that they chose to go with. Then there is the typical identity politics that is force-fed to the viewer. Agent Noor, an otherwise pleasing character, makes a banal speech on her difficult road in achieving professional success in law enforcement, stemming from her race before lamenting Leo's and Roger's different life experience. The subject is thereafter abandoned. The subplots are particularly limited and have little structure that allows for their development. To its credit, the show does have some fun moments, some eventful scenes that the viewer doesn't always see coming. A lot of the actor's chemistry was wasted in what could have developed into something interesting. A traditional series structure could have worked wonders for it. Kaleidoscope's drawbacks for the most part come down to that. 
On the other hand, maybe its random show order could have been more captivating if kept a little bit shorter as say, a 7 episode format instead. Yet the biggest flaw of this series, its randomness, is precisely what has attracted more viewers. Indeed, it may outperform a lot of shows in terms of views, but people will soon forget all about it with new seasons coming out for such favorites as Lucifer, Briggerton, and The Witcher.